In this video, we're gonna be taking these two Apollos with these two expansion batteries and making a split phase 240 volt system. That will be 240 volts at 25 amps for 6,000 watts of output, since volts times amps equals watts. You can see this collection of cables up top here. You can see these two units are not connected together yet. We're gonna be going through it step by step. Hopefully this will be a quick guide for you and I'll show you how you can run a 240 volt setup to back up your entire home this way. Now, if there are ads in this video, they are not placed there by me. I have ads turned off. So if you're seeing ads, that's not me. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to help you get this information in a quick manner. And if you decide that this information is helpful, please consider contributing to my Patreon account. You can go to patreon.com slash minuteman prep. As well, you can find the exact same system that I'm gonna be running here in this video and in my other videos at poweredportablesolar.com. You can get discounts, lifetime support, extra accessories for free, all sorts of benefits by ordering there. You get all the same benefits as you would ordering from a manufacturer, including warranty, but much more with that by ordering from poweredportablesolar.com. So hopefully you appreciate me not putting ads on this video and I appreciate any support that you give. Let's go ahead and get right into making a 240 volt, 6,000 watt, 21.5 kilowatt hour setup for my entire house. I'm not gonna be going into all the specs of each unit with this video. I'm just gonna be going into how to get this done. You will need this blue cable, which also comes with these communication yellow cables. That is your split phase kit. It comes in the kit if you order from poweredportablesolar.com. You'll also get your solar cables with breakers as well as the battery cables if you get expansion batteries. I'm gonna go straight to the user manual and pull up the split phase configuration. So starting on page 19, you can see I've got split phase 240 volts. Split phase with two units. The biggest thing we need to pay attention to right here is we're gonna go from battery one to battery one connection with that blue cable. These other lines you can ignore for now. Then as far as getting your communication set up, on the back, and I'll show you how to do this, we're gonna go from communication port one over to one, and then from two over to two between the two systems. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. First of all, I've got my battery cables, which have the red tag. I'm going from battery port two to battery port one. We can see on this unit, which I previously had set up for single phase, I'm on battery port one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off, open up battery port two. I guess I only need to take off the top one here. I'm gonna go battery port two, and then battery port one. That's been redone, these are both ready. I'm gonna take my blue labeled cable. You can see this is an upside down smiley face. I'm gonna match that upside down smiley face. Push on, twist lock, upside down smiley face. Push on, twist lock. Now both of those are on, you can see I could pull them, nothing is coming out, everything's very secure. You need to make sure that the systems are completely turned off when you're doing this. For communication, I'm gonna pull off these covers. I'm gonna take my first one. There's a hole up top here, push that in. I'm gonna go one to one. Do the same here, but go two to two. We'll come back to doing the solar connections. Right now we're ready to turn everything on, so I'm gonna flip open all these plastic covers, and I'm just gonna turn on each unit simultaneously. Now see the screens will flash, and then we need to reset the inverter. I'm gonna push that finger button, and then we're gonna go into settings and do this both at the same time. I'm gonna go from parallel mode, single phase, and I'm gonna to go to split phase and click P1, and then here I'm gonna go split phase P2. So now we see 2P1, 2P2, we should be getting alert because it was set for single phase before. Double check our settings here, 2P2. I'm gonna push the flashing button up here. 2P1, 2P2, back to home and home. Okay, we got 120 volts, 25 amps here, and the same over here. Now I'm gonna get a special adapter that goes from here and here into one cord. This is the other cable that comes in your split phase kit. We have two TT30Ps, P just means plug, and then it combines into one NEMA 1450R, R meaning receptacle. All I'm going to do, I'm gonna push these here. It is important 
that the inverters are not turned on. It is actually recommended in the user manual that these systems be completely turned off. I'm gonna plug that in here, plug that in here. You really should turn off the units. Just to check for 240, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the inverter here and turn on the inverter here. I'm gonna take my voltmeter, I'm gonna set it to volts AC, which is the squiggly line here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch these two prongs in here and we can see we have 240 volts at 60 hertz. Now all I have to do is get from here to my interlock switch. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, so I have the system completely turned off. I have my RV plugs in and I have my NEMA 1450R. This here is my interlock switch. You can see it's a NEMA SS2-50P. So right inside here, I have those prongs sticking out. So I have the R connector, which is gonna connect to that. Now, not all interlock switch will have the same outlet. If you don't have one, I recommend an SS2-50P, simply for the fact that it's gonna be much easier to upgrade your system over time. This is rated to 50 amps output. And I actually have four Apollos, and I will be doing a 50 amp input eventually. So if you ever think there's a slight chance you'll want a bigger system, install the right interlock from the beginning. This is a very heavy duty cord. I'm gonna take this NEMA 1450P. I'm gonna plug it into this. Again, the systems are turned off. You want to do this with the system completely turned off. I'm gonna open this up, put this in, and this one actually twist locks, so it can't be pulled out. The next size down is an L1430P. That would be the next one to go with, and that one's rated to 30 amps. So if you don't do an SS250P, do an L1430P. Now I'm gonna turn on the system using these power buttons on the back. Then I'll wait for the screens to get turned on. I'll check the settings, make sure we're still good to go. I'm gonna push the flashing finger button. I'm check settings. I've got 2P1, 2P2, very good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the inverters. This is going to supply power to a breaker that's currently turned off in my electrical panel. And then we're gonna turn off energy from the grid and switch to running on these. Let me show you how I do that. This is my main electrical panel. This is my interlock breaker, which is also called a generator outlet breaker. This is the interlock switch. It's a physical piece of metal that doesn't allow me to have grid and backup power on at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off grid power See, the lights went out. Now I can lift up this piece of metal and turn on this breaker. And now we have power to the whole house that is running on the Apollos right now. Now we can see right here, I have a 468 watt load on this leg and a 99 watt load on this leg. The beauty of the Apollos is that they will drain together as well as charge together, even though they are both running different legs. That is the problem that I had with other power stations on the market is that one would drain faster than the other. And so after a day, I would have to swap. And by swap, I mean, I'd have to take this cable and move it over here and take this cable and move it over here. Now I'm gonna engage my well pump. I have running water. This is the beauty of having backup power. I could do the same with a gas generator, but that is a very limited supply of energy. Once the gasoline is gone, or if it's gone bad, or if I can't get any more of it, it's toast. The sun doesn't shine every single day, which is where the gasoline becomes a backup to my solar. I'll turn this off. My point is, I have reliable solar, which allows me to really power my house very comfortably. I can put 8.8 .8 kilowatts of solar input on that. We'll call it eight kilowatts to favor the negative side. In a normal day, that would be capable of making about 40 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. So I have enough battery capacity to run the entire night and enough solar input to run everything I want during the day, plus fully recharge the system. So now that I'm running the whole house off of the Apollos, I want to add my solar. I currently have 16 400 watt solar panels and on one, I have 4,000 watts, and the other one, I have 2,400 watts. It doesn't matter how unbalanced they are. Ideally, I wanna have the same amount of solar input on both, because that's just easier on the system. But the point is, even if they are unbalanced, it will balance between the batteries as well as the output, no problem at all. All I would do is take the long ends of my solar cable and plug that into the back of the Apollo, take my short end, 
and connect my solar cables to it that are coming from my solar panels. Green means that the system is turned off. And then red means that the system is turned on for allowing power to come in from the panels. So I'm simply going to keep this in the off position with, with the green showing. I'm gonna connect everything together and then turn it on and start charging up my system. I have all four of my units on my HiSolus app and I can monitor these two right here as well as my other two all from the app. So I can simply click on it and I can see exactly what's going on. And obviously I don't have solar panels connected right now, but everything is monitorable right here in the app. Very easy to connect to the app. And still one of the coolest things is that if I drain these too low, the unattended mode or the dark start mode will automatically kick the whole system back on and continue running my house once the solar panels have recharged the batteries to 20%. Just another reason why I love the Apollos. No other system on the market has that. The other super impressive thing, see this red light on here? Switch that light off. Even though I'm outputting 240 to the house, I still have access to use 120 volt power here off of the units. Just a one more thing that no other solar generator can do. The number one kit that people get from PoweredPortableSolar.com is two Apollos, two batteries, and 20 solar panels. That gives you 8,000 watts of input, 21.5 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, and up to 6,000 watts of output from the system. So as long as you're not running a full-size air conditioner constantly with a dryer and an electric water heater all at the same time, then you're gonna be just fine. This is capable of running an air conditioner if you get a micro air soft start device put on your air conditioner. Air conditioners use a lot of energy to start up and they use a lot of energy to run. There's a difference between being able to run something and then being able to run it a long time. I do not recommend running an air conditioner off a system like this constantly because your typical air conditioner is going to use about a sixth of the amount of battery capacity that's in here per hour that it runs. So that gives you six to 12 hours of runtime depending on how long it's running for every hour. The bottom line is reach out to me at info at poweredportablesolar.com. We'll get you discounts and kits, everything found for your situation. You can even run freeze dryer. Here I have freeze dried brisket, freeze dried scrambled eggs, freeze dried cubed cheese, all run out of that freeze dryer off of these very systems right here. The Apollo is truly incredible and I'd love to help you get better prepared. This is how I choose to prepare for my family and for myself, being able to have running water, hot water, cooling, heating, all of those things that make life so great. And then I don't lose all the food in this fridge or in my other freezer or in my other fridge. I have all of my necessities taken care of with a simple system like this. And it's about a third to a quarter of the cost is having a local solar company install a similar system for me. Be prepared guys, in another upcoming video, I'm gonna show you how I can use four Apollos together to run my entire house. That's 12,000 watts of output and then 43 kilowatt hours of battery capacity and up to 17.6 kilowatts of solar input. That puts it on the scale of large hybrid inverter systems and server rack batteries, all on wheels that I can take with me. I can buy that investment once, take it to my new house, whatever the situation is. It truly is an incredible system. Stay tuned guys, subscribe. I appreciate you. Be prepared. See y'all in the next one.